As your network grows, it becomes more difficult to know exactly who's plugging in to the different ports. Someone might come in and plug into a port in a conference room, and perhaps as a network professional, you're concerned that that person may have access to resources that you really don't want to give them access to. In those environments, you may choose to use something like 802.1x. This is Port-Based Network Access Control, PNAC. It's often abbreviated just as NAC, Network Access Control. You don't get access onto the network until you authenticate. Even if you plug in a laptop into a port, you're not going to be able to get anywhere until you provide a username, a password, and the other authentication that's required. This uses a lot of encryption. It uses standard protocols like Radius. It takes advantage of restricting this right at the switch. So this is a very intelligent way of providing access onto the network. This also usually has a function built into it that can perform a posture assessment of the remote device. So as I'm logging into the network, the network is going to query my device to see if I have an antivirus agent running, if I'm running disk encryption, if I'm up to date with all of my antivirus signatures, and it can report that information back to the central controller, who can then make a decision on whether you're allowed onto the network. If you're too much of a risk, we may not provide you access. And that's all done with something called a posture assessment. This is not port access on a TCP or UDP level. Those are different kinds of ports. We're talking about physical ports, the ports where you physically plug in a wire into a switch itself. I'm able to restrict right there at that port, and I have to have a very specialized process to be able to provide that level of security. The process of 802.1x involves your workstation. You are the supplicant. You are communicating to a device that is the authenticator. And then ultimately, the authenticator will be communicating with an authentication server. So you go into the conference room. You plug in your laptop. You plug in your device onto that Ethernet connection and nothing happens. Nothing is going to happen until the authenticator sends out a message that says, is anybody new on the network? Has anyone plugged in recently? Is anybody out there that does not have access? And at that point, your workstation can send a message back saying, hi, yes, my name is James. Let me send you that response to that message you sent out. I'd like to have some access to the network, please. The authenticator then talks to the authentication server and says, I got James. He's on the network. I thought you'd like to know that. The authentication server then says, well, James is someone who we can let on the network if he has the right credentials. So please send a message to James and find out if I'm able to talk to him in a private way. The authenticator then sends a message to my workstation and says, OK, are you able to talk to the authenticator? I'm like, absolutely. Here's my username. Here's my password. Here's all the credentials that I need to get on to the network. The authenticator passes those off to the authentication server, who then checks my username and checks my password and confirms that I am really who I say I am. At that point, the authentication servers thought about it and says, fantastic, James is somebody who is allowed onto the network. It sends that to the authenticator, who then sends a message to me saying, yes, you are allowed access to the network. It begins to open up the ports. And the authenticator then lets everybody on the network know that I'm authenticated. My switch port is enabled. It may even move me to a particular VLAN, all because now it knows who I am and where I plugged in. This 802.1x process is a relatively complex to set up and get running, but you can see there's a lot of power providing port level access using these specialized protocols.